Filming from Gen Con 2019, I'm here at the booth of Privateer Press, where Will has agreed to tell us a little bit about a new release that they are presenting here that has received a lot of attention, and that is called Riot Quest. Yeah. So what can you tell us about it, Will? So Riot Quest is our new game that just came out. It's a hobby miniatures board game, which means it is going to come with resin miniatures you put together and paint yourself, but the gameplay is actually more like board game style. Uh -huh. um, War, Privateer Press, we're known for War Machine of Horrors. We're known for the more deep strategic war games. Riot Quest couldn't be any more different. Uh, it's a super casual, fun party game. The idea is it's what we like to call Saturday morning apocalypse. Okay. Uh, in this, the War Machine storyline, it's as if everything has gone wrong. This is a, a sort of what-if scenario. The world has gone completely kaboom, and there's only a handful of survivors left. So in this game, you play on a hex grid map and you build a team of five to ten models. You never have to play with more than five to ten models. And the idea is you and up to three other players are having a big free-for-all sort of brawl on this map where the idea is go find treasure, build special gear and equipment to help you win, and then there's a variety of different bounties they are random every turn that score you victory points. Maybe you have to go plant a bomb, or maybe you have to go defuse a walking death trap. The deck is a shared market of objectives you're all trying to, sh to get. You shuffle it up, you flip over two of the objectives, and the first person to score one, you get that card and a new one flips over. So every time you play, the path to victory is different. Uh -huh. Those bounty cards are worth victory points, and the first person to seven victory points wins. Most games, 1v1, about 20 minutes. Four-player free-for-all, maybe 45 minutes to an hour. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So we can see that we're actually demoing it right now uh -huh. at Gen Con. And so uh, this uh, compound, what we see here is based on what you find in the starter set? Yeah, this is the, the starter set? Yeah, this is as if each player had their own starter. Okay. So the starter comes with five models and everything you need to play. So here we see the hex grid map they're, they're playing on. Mm -hmm. The starter set comes with a poster map, but we're going to make neoprene mats for all the maps we encode on, because they're higher quality and a little nicer. Uh -huh. This is nice. what we had to fit in the box, right? Sure. Uh, you get the five different models, then you get all the cards, the rules, and the special dice you need to play. So here we see Tony, who's given our demos, works with Private so, Press. He's over by that shared market of cards I was talking about. So you can see the uh -huh. green bounty cards, and there's two in play right now. Those are the two cards that they're trying to achieve whatever the objective on them is right now. And as soon as someone does, they'll actually take that card and score a point. Uh -huh. And then a new card's going to flip off the top of the deck. I saw. But this game is an alternating activation game. So one player goes, they activate one of their heroes, they run them around the board, make them attack, use special abilities, interact with each other. There. Then it goes on to the next player. Uh, you keep going around, and the main resource in this game is your dice. You'll see that those white dice. Mm -hmm. They start on a dice roll, which is that red card, and as you spin dice to do things, you take those dice when you have someone run or attack, and you place them on the hero that used the dice to do that. When it's your turn, you can only activate one of your heroes that doesn't have dice on them. So you spin the dice to do the thing, but they also lock that hero down for the turn. So most people only get to do one activation a turn. At the end of the turn, whenever they're spinning all their dice, you pull them off the cards, and a new round starts. Nice. So you have some flexibility there. Yeah. A hero could take between one and five actions, but every action takes a dice. So if you want one hero to do a lot on one turn, you could spend five dice on one turn. But really, you're kind of limiting yourself later on in the game the amount of actions your other heroes can take. Uh huh. Now you'll see that everybody's got heroes on the board, and then they've also got heroes sitting near them. Don't have any more cards to do anything. What that is is, no matter how many heroes you bring in that five to ten number, you only ever have four in play. The rest are sitting on your bench. And when a hero gets knocked out and dies, you spawn a new one in. So this makes it very easy for new players because you only have to worry about four models at one time. That helps. But with the alternating activation system, it means when you take your turn, you don't have to worry about planning four or five turns ahead. You can simply kind of do what you're doing on that turn and then plan for like later, maybe one or two turns ahead. But even then, because the bounties are always changing, the win condition is always changing, right when you think you're about to do something, the whole scenario might flip on you. And that adds an element of sort of a little bit of random luck, a little bit of strategy, and a lot of sort of chaotic fun to the game. Mm -hmm. And the people we found playing it have been saying, oh, this is a great game to play with my friends that don't normally play board games. This is a great game to play with my children because it's very easy to pick up and play and it doesn't require the, the deeper strategic investment that a lot of us have grown to love in our more crunchy, bigger board games. So this is quick, family fun, very easy, and if you like painting miniatures, we've got 30 heroes for the game planned between now and next summer, so the game is being expanded for quite some time. Nice. And the game is available here at Gen Con? It's here at Gen Con. It'll be available in stores later this month in August. Excellent. Thank you so much for telling us about Riot Quest. Thank you.